gradually to rest in the shadow of the Capitol's monument, the happy ending of a practical experiment. <laughs> To the Oval come all those thousands who intend to see the destination of the Ashes decided in the fifth and final match, the timeless test. Wyatt, who has won the toss on the last three occasions, has no luck this time. First blood to Australia, and Woodfall naturally decides to bat. At 11.30, the English skipper leads his men onto the field. The tall figure is that great veteran, Frank Woolley of Kent, brought in at the last minute. Ponsford comes in with Brown, who has a friendly nod for the cameramen. Those opens the English attack from the Vox Hall end. Allen is at the other end. Presently, Clark replaces Bowles, and England's shock tactics are kept going. In his first over, our fast left-hander clean bowls Brown. So far, so good. Bradman takes his place and soon shows his best form. Ponsford, the hero of many a match, reaches his fifth test century. Not long afterwards, the crowd is cheering Bradman for his hundred. And so the merry game goes on, with everybody on their toes, including the police. A quick single is nearly too quick for Ponsford. Clark pegs away. You can see in slow motion what determination he is putting into it. Bowes does his worst from the other end. And now Adam viciously hurls them down. Three fast bowlers, one after the other but no impression is made on Ponsford and Bradman. Don has now overhauled his partner and gets his 200. <laughs> then Ponsford. Still together, they set up the world's record partnership for any wicket, beating Hobbs and Rhodes' stand of 323 at Melbourne in 1912. In desperation, Wyatt puts himself on. Nearing the finish, Bradman's innings closes at 244. At the end, McCabe is with Ponsford, who carries his bat for 205. A great day's batting gives Australia 475 for two.